What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna try something a little bit different, and I thought I might talk through how we might model a condition in both SketchUp and in something like Blender. Just because I find it interesting to look at the differences between the way you can model things between the different programs. Um, I don't know if this is something I'm gonna do long-term, but it's something that I just wanted to try this morning because I thought it was kind of interesting how you might approach different conditions. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the idea for this video and maybe future videos came from just looking at a condition like this one and thinking about different ways that I might model it, right? Because it's got a bunch of different recesses in it and what we would have to do is we would have to cut all of these different holes or something like that in order to get this condition. And so in SketchUp, what you might do is you might come in here and you might model out the different beams. So I would create something like this and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a beam. We'll say it's gonna be six inches wide six inches deep. We'll say it's gonna be maybe like eight inches deep or something like that. And so what we would wanna do is we would wanna take this whole thing and make it a component like this. And then we would use the move tool in copy mode to create some copies of it. And so then we could use the move tool in copy mode to create some copies of it. So in this case, I would create a copy over here, then type in the forward slash or the divided, type in three and hit the enter key. That would allow me to come in here and create equally spaced copies in here. Then probably what I would do is I would come in here and I would just do something similar. So in this case, I'm gonna draw a four inch line here, another four inch line here and extrude it across. And then I would make this a component we'll just call this beam two for what we're doing right here. But then you could just take, make a number of different copies of this. Type in times 25 or times 30. And so that's gonna allow you to add your copies in here really quickly, whoops. And so what I would do in this situation is I would just take this whole thing and I would make this a component and I would call this like beam group or something like that. And then use the move tool in copy mode to create two copies like this. So we're able to create this pretty easily. And then if we do need to make any changes, we could come in here and notice how since these are all components, we could make changes fairly quickly. So I could adjust the thickness, of all of these other things like that. The one thing I don't like about this is it's not necessarily ultra dynamic in the sense that to make a change to the spacing, for example, or anything like that, I would have to come back in and get rid of a bunch of these like this and then redo the spacing. So say we wanted this to be every six inches instead of every four inches or something like that. I would just have to redo this, right? So, so I would just have to recreate these in here and redo the copy. Not a massive deal, but it would take some additional time if you wanted to do that rework. And so we're gonna approach this slightly differently in Blender because what Blender has is what's known as modifiers. And those are basically things that you can apply to pieces of geometry that aren't live, that are adjustable, meaning that you can quickly make changes. So let's say for example, that I was to toggle on vertex snapping in Blender. And so what I would do in Blender is I would add either a plane or a cube. You could kind of go either way with this. Um, I want to make sure that I set my units to Imperial. But for something like this in Blender, let's say that I wanted this to be six inches. So 0.5 feet right here. I would have to move it to align with this corner, which again, not a massive deal. That is one thing I don't really like about the way that Blender does things is the snapping isn't exceptional. Um, it's not great. You can snap things to the corners like this, but it just takes a little bit of extra time. But then we would just come into edit modes. We would just tab into edit mode and just move this across like this. Well, the cool thing about doing this in Blender, and I may move this down another two inches. But the cool thing about doing this in Blender is you can use what's known as an array modifier. And so what the array modifier allows you to do is it allows you to set um, or create copies of your objects. So in this case, for example, I don't want a relative offset, I want a constant offset, but we could set our distance to something like this. Well, those are live in here using the modifiers. So we could come back and make that adjustment later if we wanted to change the spacing or something like that. And so let's say we wanted to add our horizontal beams now, we could just do a shift A. I'd probably add a cube in this case. And I would set this to 0.5 
like this. And we could go ahead and set our rotation to 90 degrees like this. That would allow me to come in here and make an adjustment. Um, probably what I would need to do is tab into edit mode and move this edge over. So it was six inches, but we only want this to be four inches. So we're gonna do a two divided by 12. So something like this, and then we could move this up so that it aligns. And then I would just extrude it. So it's just a little clunky getting your initial setup done with the tools that are in here. Um, they're really great from approximating, but it, it can get a little bit annoying when you're trying to do something a little bit more precise. All right, but then where this gets really powerful is now we're gonna use the array modifier in order to array this across. And we can just add an array modifier to this object. And before we set this to a fixed count, but what we can do instead is we can actually set this to a fixed length. And so when we set this to a fixed length, what it's going to do is it's gonna allow you to set a length of your objects that are in here. Um, so you can say, we want this to fit a length of 20 feet. So if I type in a value of 20 feet like this, and then I adjust my distance and it might be a little less than 20 feet. It might be 19.5 feet, but notice how I can adjust the constant offset of the X value in here so that it's going to fill in this distance with a certain number of these based on the spacing between them. So you can use this to look at different options in here really easily um, just by adjusting that spacing value. And the cool thing about this is it's going to be live, meaning we can make that change multiple different times in here um, depending on what we want this to look like. So in this case, we'll set this to be like 0.66, but then what we would do is we would add a second modifier so we would just go to add modifier. And in this case, we would set our constant offset to be on the Z axis instead of the Y axis. And so what that means is that gives us a live copy, whoops, of these objects in here in Blender. So if I adjust this length, we wanna adjust it so it's really kind of fit in there. And then we're gonna set our count to two. Well, if we look at that, what that's done is that's added multiple different arrays in here, and you can adjust the spacing of all of them using this constant offset function once you use that fixed length. So you can look at what this would look like with different distances between them using these modifiers. So I'm not really interested in picking a winner or a loser as much as comparing the different ways that things can be modeled. Um, so, I mean, there's pluses and minuses, right? The snapping and the more precision drawing tools in SketchUp, I think are a lot easier to use than blenders, but the array function is really powerful and it's kind of live. So there's going to be pluses and minuses no matter which one you use, but I just think it's interesting to compare them. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this series idea. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.